London. These bands make music. In this edition of These Bands Make Music, we present Carol Gibbons and his orchestra. Here to tell you about the show is Barbara McFadden. In this series of programs, we try to introduce to you some of the most famous bands and orchestras who entertain over the air in Britain. And today, Carol Gibbons is with us as our subject in this short biography in music. It's 20 years now since a young American musician first came to London. And today, Carol Gibbons is still giving everyone in Britain music for dancing, entertaining millions on the radio, and touring the country to play to troops and war workers. Well, now, as the orchestra played Carol Gibbon's signature tune on the air, you heard for a few moments what the band sounds like today. But to begin our program, we'll take you back to 1924 and let you hear how it sounded in those days. <laughs> you might have heard Oh Me, Oh My, Oh You, played by Carol in 1924. And now let me introduce Carol Gibbons and his orchestra of 20 years later. In 1944, this is how the Orchestra 16 sounds playing an up-to-date arrangement of the same tune. <laughs>
most pleasant memories of Carol is of an evening spent in his home. Naturally, a grand piano is one of the features of the Gibbons drawing room, and equally naturally, one bullies Carol into playing it. On the evening I'm thinking of, Harry Jacobson was there too, and so we had not only solos, but duets and songs galore. Harry Jacobson is one of the many young men who began their careers by playing with Carol and have since made names for themselves on their own. In the next tune, not only Harry, who composed it, but another of these stars who sprang from the Gibbon stable is concerned. Paul Fenulay, who now leads his own band, the RAF Skyrockets, has arranged the number. It's one of Harry Jacobson's, Harry Jacobson's most charming compositions, and here it is, My Love for You. <laughs> was Carol Gibbons and his orchestra playing the Harry Jacobson hit, My Love for You. And now we come to a tune which features Carol not only as pianist and conductor, but as a composer. During the only 18 months since 1924 that Carol was away from England, he was working over in Hollywood for one of the big studios. He says he was hardly overworked, as there were 17 other songwriters with him, and anyway, in those 1931 days, gangster pictures came in and slap-up musicals went out for the time being. Still, he had a good time, and one of his studio companions was an old friend, Jimmy Dierenforth, who has written many of the lyrics for Carol's tunes. You probably remember Garden in the Rain, Possibly, and Misunderstood. And another, which Julie Dawn's going to sing now, and which is one of Carol's own favorites, Peace of Mind. If true. 
troubles brew, joy will bubble through, and we spelled capital W. We'll have peace of mind, hand in hand in a Life will be rosy, comfy and cozy. Happy the live long day. Work will be pleasure, and at our leisure, we'll kiss the blues away. When we've done the task, in the sun will bask and wonder what anyone could ask more than. Of mind in a home of our who've been associated with Carol Gibbons are now serving in various branches of His Majesty's forces. Paul Fenoulet, as I mentioned, is a member of the RAF, and so is his brother Arthur, who used to play the trombone and made arrangements for Carol. George Melacrino, who introduced many hit songs with the orchestra, is now a regimental sergeant major in the army. Another favorite is Sergeant Leslie Douglas, who's managed to get a few hours leave from the RAF, and so we're glad to welcome him now. He's going to sing a tune with which both he and George Melacrino have entertained us many a time. That good old good one, Marquita. Marquita, Marquita, I still hear you calling me back. Once again, I still feel the spell of your last kiss upon me. Since then, life has been all in vain. All has been sadness without you, Marquita. Each day finds me lonely and blue. My poor heart is broken. I want you, Marquita. I need you. Thank you. 
finds me lonely and blue. My poor heart is broken. I want you, Makita. I need you, Makita. I do. Carol Gibbons spends a great deal of time in these days of war taking his orchestra to factories and camps to entertain both troops and war workers. Of course, he also plays the piano on his own on these occasions, and one of his most popular features is a little sort of party piece which he calls You Call the Tune. Four people in the audience are allowed to pick one note each, and around these four chosen notes and these notes only, Carol guarantees to compose a tune there and then. Well, we're hardly the sort of audience that Carol usually has, either in quantity or quality, but there are four of us here, and so we'll show you just how it's done. Julie Dawn, Leslie Douglas, our producer, Charles Maxwell, and myself are going to call the notes. All right, Carol, you better listen carefully, because here goes. Julie, you choose first. A flat. A flat. All right, Carol, that was Julie's choice. And now, Leslie Douglas. D. That makes two notes. And now, Charles Maxwell. Um, F. All right, and one last one from me. B flat. Now then, I think we better have those just over again. A flat. D. F. And B flat. Now, now there are your four notes, Carol, so now you can play for it. Gibbons has never been caught out yet, so I don't think I'll argue now. Four notes we gave him, and four notes he used. There's another Gibbons feature which is popular both on gramophone records and when Carol plays for forces, war workers, and everyone everywhere who wants this war to wind up on a big and definite finish. Carol maintains that many really good tunes are loved for a month or so and then forgotten. So in Carol Recalls the Tunes, he likes to revive some of these old numbers. The ones he's going to play now are Lover by Rogers and Hart, a tune which Harry Jacobson wrote specially for Carol called I L L Love You So and which Carol's going to sing. And then lastly, Ray Noble's Love is the Sweetest Thing. <laughs> bungalow for two now when I'm alone I talk as others do but when I talk to you 
I stammer and stutter and hardly can utter a single word or two. I g g guess that I am just just too shy. It's just so sad, but boy, it's true. I l l l love you so, wa 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 wa, you so I do. I love you so, I do do. Now the orchestra and Julie Dorn join Carol Gibbons in one of the many tunes that Carol brought back with him from America at the beginning of the war. You see, just before war broke out, Carol left England for his annual holiday in the United States. And then, as he was an American citizen and sea passages in '39 were a bit tricky, he had an awful job trying to get back. I'm glad to say, though, that he did manage a passage in November 1939, and that he's been with us ever since. After touring the provinces for a few months with his orchestra, all of whom had waited for his return, he came back to his old home, London's famous Savoy Hotel. He arrived back to find the hotel the same as ever, his white piano where it always had been, but the dancers looked rather different. Uniforms had taken the place of tails and dinner jackets, and the girls came straight on to dance after their day's work in a war job. But even the blackout and the difficulties of getting home didn't deter people from wanting to enjoy themselves when they came home on leave. And so the restaurant was as full as ever, and the wartime dancers wanted the latest tunes in the same way as they did in peacetime. One of the numbers which Carol introduced in those early days of the war was this one: "I can't resist you." <laughs> And I would if I could, but I can't. I can't resist you. When I'm looking at you, you can practically do as you please. I'm yours completely. From my head to my toes, every part of me knows that I'm yours. I'm yours. Every time that you speak, I begin to get weak in the knees. I try to be strong, but something goes wrong. I'm in your power when I'm in your arms. I've tried to stop fate, but now it's too late. So I don't even try, 'cause I know that I. To say you affect me this way, but you do. I can't resist you. Heaven knows that I should and I would if I could, but I. Can't. Once asked Carol why he invariably played Hallelujah as the last number every night at the Savoy. He explained that on one night ten years ago, 
It was getting very late and the band were just about to pack up when he struck up Hallelujah as one final tune. Well, from that evening on, it became a tradition. And on one occasion, when Carol forgot all about it, the band wouldn't leave the stand nor the dance of the floor until the ritual had been observed. So if any of us ever want to be able to end this program, hallelujah, it must be. said hallelujah means that Carol Gibbons and and his orchestra have played the last tune of this program. I hope that we've given you a musical picture of the various specialities of a band led by one of our American friends who has made Britain his home and Britain's his friends for the past 20 years. And now before we leave you here's Carol Gibbons himself. Well, I just want to say I've enjoyed doing this today and I hope you have enjoyed it as well. Now all I want to say now is goodbye everybody. to These Bands Make Music. In this edition of the series, which introduces you to the bands and orchestras who entertain in Britain, we featured Carol Gibbons and his orchestra with Julie Dawn and Leslie Douglas. Barbara McFadden introduced the program, which is produced by Charles Maxwell in the studios of the London Transcription Service of the British Broadcasting Corporation.